Okay, it looks like uh, we've, we've got a few more people who've signed in, uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and get started then. So uh, thank you for everyone uh, who's been able to join us, and um, we're looking forward to hearing this talk, so I'll hand it over to, uh, to Gong now. Uh, Gong, whenever you're ready, please feel free. If you 
you look at the renewable uh, per year, the hydro is still very low, three to four terawatt per year. Uh, um, when larger, 25 to 70, but if you look at the sun, 23,000 terawatt a year, right? If you compare that with the global energy demand, right, you only need 0.1 to 0.2 percent of that. The solar, you only need to have a stop part to, to, to be able to supply the global energy demand. And many years ago, people did a calculation is, is that, okay, how much land is required uh, to install all the solar modules in order to power the entire globe is not so much, right? It's, it's probably a few thousand square miles, right? So that's about it. So if you think about the solar, right, the, the irradiance is like a one kilowatt hour, one kilowatt per square meter so, uh, at, uh, at the direct incident. So that's tremendous of energy we can harvest from, from the sun, right? And uh, the other reason, which you do Kiwi is uh, yeah, uh, the global warming. So, so I think we can debate uh, whether global warming is caused by burning too much fossil fuel. Uh, but there are two points to argue about it, right? So one point is the global warming. If you look at this data, right, the temperature rise at land, the temperature rise in the sea for the last <coughs> 150 years, that has been the real trend, right? So, so whether this is caused by Burning fossil fuel, that's to be debated, but you could always argue the generation of carbon dioxide is, is a lot of good things, right? There's a lot of evidence or motivation that we should do QE, right? The, the other thing is, uh, you know, because of all this, uh, the human behavior and that impact to, to the climate, if we start to see more extreme weather in the U.S. and, and in globe, that costs money. Right. In US, for example, the, the wildfire in California and the heaven rains, the mudslide, and then flows, that cost $300 billion a year. And that was just something we, we, we saw, right? And one more motivation. So, electrify the grid, and now there's also a demand that electrify the transportation, right? So the electric cars now start to become the mainstream, right? So this chart basically showing uh, from uh, through the last 10 years, right, the number of uh, electric car models has increased from a few to uh, more than 60. Uh, and in parallel, very similar to the cost reduction of solar, uh, the cost of lithium battery has pretty much reduced by 10 times, right? So the, the Basically, the electric, uh, the transportation, electrifying the transportation is become a reality, and that would lead more electricity. And the work we want this electricity to come from, of course, you want something renewable. So I um, provide uh, quite a few uh, strong motivations that why photo wet tech is something we should. Uh, not only being proud of, but also something which is really committed to. And here's just some more uh, uh, things suggesting that this is going to be a, the main trend, and it's already become the main trend, right? So, so here, this is basically uh, the, the world electricity generation by, by energy source, right? So where you see the yellow portion, let me see what I can have, the laser. Pointer. Well, the yellow portion does the solar TV, right? So if you zoom in, just look up from 2010 to 2020, you start to see growth. But moving forward, you can see a much stronger growth uh, it's until 2060, where you start to say, OK, maybe you start a surgery. But that's not really the case. I think when people did the prediction here, they're trying to say, OK, this is perhaps just one third of the energy supply, electricity supply, and without the storage, if you factor in the storage, I think there's a possibility of solar PV can be 100% of the electricity supply, or pretty much close to that, right? So a lot of things you can tell is, is, is that the, the, you wouldn't see much growth from coal, oil, or, or larger, larger gas moving forward, which are underneath here. So. Uh, so anyway, so I'm going to talk about a little more uh, later 
regarding this, but uh, let me move forward uh, and start to cover uh, <coughs> uh, something about the TV industry. How did we grow? Right, again, let's do some uh, size comparison, right? So, so imagine this big circle is the U.S. total energy demand, right? So, which is about 30,000 terawatt hour. And uh, within that big circle, the electricity demand is a smaller circle here, right? And then if you look up uh, the global TV, right now we're just a, a very tiny pie here, right? And then if you look at uh, the global energy demand, right, it's, it's a much bigger circle. So, and the TV now is still a very small portion, but very significant portion of that. Uh, uh, it's already getting close to, to, to one or two percent. Uh, then if you look up uh, the number here, right, so I get it wrong, so it's 0.5 percent of the global energy demand as far as electricity is, uh, is a few percent already. And if you look up for solar, <laughs> it's a, a larger small portion, but hopefully is a significant portion, right? So if you look at the dimension, the size, right, you can see a very tremendous opportunity, right? Uh, and uh, right now, I think TV is still relatively small compared to the regular conventional er energy supply, but where stores become the main screen, right? Uh, and, and the size is already something it's fairly impressive, right? So. I, I, I'll give you some example, right? So this one is just a <coughs> one power plant we built five or six years ago. The top of solar farm is like a 550 megawatts. It has a video, but unfortunately I don't know how to play it. It's the uh, online sharing, but uh, so this is a 550 megawatt uh, uh, solar farm. Uh, if you just drive. Uh, around this solar farm is probably going to take you about an hour, right? And this this one was purchased by uh, uh, I think Brickshire and uh, as, uh, as some kind of retirement funding. So basically, right now, uh, solar power plant is considered to be able to provide very steady cash flow to to a, a few retirement funds. That, that was uh, that was their consideration. Uh, last year, actually, last September, I was in California. I I, I toured a uh, 220 uh, megawatt power power plant constructed by by First Solar, and it's called Cow Flat. Uh, among that 220 megawatts, so I think a portion of that was the directly uh, electricity purchased by Apple. And then the, the rest was purchased by PG&E. So we, we took about an hour just uh, just drive through the entire power plant. That was, that was very, very impressive, right? And that, that is in the US. So again, this is just the bird view of Topaz, right? So, and the one more time, it's the largest investment grade renewable bond in history. Um, and this is something we built in Australia, 110 megawatt. We have quite a few of those in Australia. Um, and this is one in India, 40 megawatt. I think we, we did probably did more than gigawatt in India already. Uh, and this one is in Dubai, 13 uh, megawatt. Uh, anyway, so this is quite an ex example. Of the, saying, okay, even we're still a very small portion of the electricity portfolio, but as far as the size and dimension, we are already, you know, close to 100 gigawatt a year, right, for the global TV industry. So for solar, we already supplied and installed more than 20 gigawatt of Simpson solar modules in the world. Right. So this, this is another uh, interesting chart, chart, right? This is basically a giant uh, electricity capacity addition uh, in 2016, right? If you look at coal, right? So there's an addition of maybe 50 
but there's also a retirement of maybe 30, so basically the life cycle could be 50 years, right? So basically after 50 years, the, the decision is, okay, let's not build more coal firing power plant. Instead, let's do renewable, and actually that's what I'm doing. You can see the net addition of solar in 2016 was close to 80 uh, gigawatt, and when is like 50, right? So that has been more and more the trend, right? Is that the, the, the conventional power plant or, or, or electricity producer, right? When they retire a 50, uh, 50 year, year old coal or gas power plant, they do not build new coal or gas power plants. Instead, they, 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 they are more interested to build the solar uh, or, or, or other, or rely on other renewable Renewable, renewable energy source. And part of that is because, of course, there's a belief that renewable energy is future, but also I think more driving reason is that more and more the solar becomes more economic, economical, becomes more makes sense, right? You actually, you might be able to benefit you in terms of having more dollar in the pocket. Um, and uh, actually, CSU uh, sent me this slide two years earlier, and this actually is a very interesting slide. This is a, a summary did by Lazar, um, and uh, this has been updated since then. So basically, you look, look at this chart, and here is basically so the unsubsidized the solar PV. They actually, uh, for the utility scale, right, so the symptom or, or Christian Slicken, we are uh, Anywhere between forty to fifty dollars per, um, I think, per megawatt hour, right? So that is already cheaper than 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 what you compare here is than than others is than 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 uh, coals or or, or 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 diesel, right? Diesel for sure. So again, great parity is a lot of pipeline. It's already happening. Right, and uh, to, substanti to substantiate my claim, this is what I read last week, right? Idaho signed a super low solar PP. It's $21 per megawatt hour, right? Uh, and uh, in this article, they also mentioned Texas, there was one under $25, right? And their project Arizona, Nevada, Similar low prices, twenty-one to twenty-four dollars. Right, those are in U.S. What about globally? This is somebody my friend from Ginkgo shared last year. They built a, a one gigawatt per power plant in Abu Dhabi, and uh, it was like a two point four cents per kilowatt hour. Right, so. It's fairly comparable with the price in the U.S., right? So again, at this price, I see no reason that solar is not cheaper than, than coal. <coughs> <coughs> Lastly, uh, what about the global uh, PV manufacturing uh, and the installation, right? So this is a Interesting chart, right? So if you look at it, it actually has two parts, right? The the, the orange uh, is where you, you, is audio installation, and then 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 the the, the gold is is like a, the, the previous years, right? So adding up, you can see it's like ten years back, uh, 2007, right? It's like from just a few gigawatts, and now every single year we install close to 100 gigawatts, right? And we're pretty soon we're going to reach one terawatt uh, kind of capacity yeah, as far as the installation, right? So this has been tremendous, right? This is pretty close to somewhat of a long linear growth. Uh, okay, I think I'm fairly enough about um, uh, the our mission, right? Why should we do PV? Why PV makes sense, right? Not only, it only makes sense just for 
um, to, to make the Earth a better place to live, but also makes sense economic wise, right? So, okay, back to uh, what we do uh, for solar. So we uh, manufacture cattle uh, solar modules, right? So uh, let me start with, with the basic, right? So what, what is a cattle solar cell? So, uh, so basically we use cattle as an absorber material and cattle, unlike silicon, it is a direct semiconductor, so it has pretty strong absorption to, to sunlight, right? So we only use three microns of film right, to absorb more than 95% like of, the, of, the, of the solar night uh, above the bank gap, right, so this is really, uh, uh, compared to silicon, is much thinner, right, so uh, <coughs> the bank gap cartel is about 1.5 uh, electron volt, if you look at the uh, efficiency limit as predicted by Schachter Quieter, right, so cattle is actually, as a, optimized bank gap uh, in terms of the producing highest efficiency cell if everything is right. Of course, uh, 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 if you look at the efficiency right now, the record efficiency of cattle is 22 and the silicon is higher is 25-ish, right? But silicon is a single crystal as compared to cattle is holy. And also single silicon, we leverage more than 70 years of experience. Right, from the semiconductor industry, and the cattail is relatively new, right? So, but at, at any rate, the ideal efficiency there theoretically should be close to 30%, right? And then practically, we already made 22, and uh, we should be able to make 25% uh, within foreseeable future. Uh, so, a lot of Two things to mention about cattle is that it is a really uh, forgiving material. I mean, that's very important in terms of manufacturing. Basically, you can use very high rate deposition. You can produce polycrystalline film, right, with the green size, a couple of microns, but it really doesn't hurt us much, right? So you can still make more than 20% cell with the polycrystalline high rate deposit film, right? So, and also the bank, bank diagram of Cadmium and Telluride is very, very simple. So, and that's one advantage is that, is that when you prepare the material, it's probably gonna stay the same way as it is. So, you, you know, in some of us working uh, for solar, we, we often say Cadmium is a material given by, by the God, it's chosen by the God. It, it just works. Um, <coughs> all right, so a little bit of history about Canon Telluride solar cell. So, <laughs> so you, you can trace the history back to 1947 and people first did some uh, uh, synthesis of Canon Telluride, but uh, uh, long until 1956, Cattel was proposed as, as a TV absorber, and then long until 1964, people started to make a pin junction on it, right? and then long until 1980, where people started to be able to improve the film quality of cadmium telluride by some chloride vapor annealing, right? But everything, all the way from 1947 to 1980s, I think the work of has been pretty much sporadic, so, so not very much focus effort on, on this front. Unlike silicon, right, is so this generations of experience in terms how to grow crystal, how to prepare the wafer, how to minimize the recombination in the bulk, and how to stop them, how, how to pass with the interface, right? We did not have any of that, right? So the, the, the real research probably start later 1980s and then in 1990s first solar start to uh, become a, a player and the commercial production of Canyon Taylor solar modules did not uh, start until the 21st century. Uh, but at uh, any rate, the, uh, as far as the uh, Canyon Taylor solar, so it's actually pretty simple, it's just you uh, deposit uh, Historically, you deposit a cadmium sulfide layer on which is anti uh, 
serve as the enter junction. They deposit that on the PCO, which is on glass substrate, and then you deposit the p type cartel layer, and then you put the metal back compound on top, and that should form the junction, and that should be uh, the solar cell, right? You shine the light from glass side, it should produce electricity, depending on how, how well you do it. Right? On the right side is a cross section of a conventional cartel cell, right? So basically you can see uh, it's polycrystalline cartel structure. You can see the calcophyte is also small, very small grain size and not very uniform, right? But that has been the basic. That has been something uh, very different from silicon or Ghanaian arsenic. <coughs> okay, so just some more. Uh, Slides uh, on the polycrystalline structure of cannabinoid on the the top. Uh, sorry, the bottom left is is the electron beam backscattering uh, pictures, which basically highlight the different orientation of cannabinoid. Right, so it's not a it's not a very this is a much a preferred texture here. It's pretty, pretty much round any. Oriented, and uh, after that, we still don't know which orientation works better, and so far, uh, that doesn't really matter much, but we, we don't know for sure. Uh, to the right is something very interesting. Is uh, uh, so this is actually a, a, a time of flight second, sorry, ion uh, mass spectroscopy, uh, and basically it highlights that there's a chlorine decorate on the green boundaries, which has been believed crucial in terms of passing the green boundary to get better observer quality. And that's perhaps the biggest uh, discovery during the earlier date of Canon Telluride TV. Okay, uh, so, so I, I talked about uh, the cartel solar cell structure, right, and this is the old structure, right, so where, again, we have calcify as the emitter, we have the cartel as the absorber, and then the metals by contact, and this, with this kind of structure, we were actually be able to, I mean, the community were able to make more than 16%, 16.7% 16 devices, so basically, um, but that's about it, right, so it's and uh, Dr. Wu, uh, he made this, and then uh, we were allowed to be able to break his record for more than a decade. Right? So 16% uh, cell, although was a record at that time for cartel, is really lower compared with silicon, which is already 22 to 25%, or CIDS, which was 22% uh, in, in like a 10 or 15 years ago, right? So which wasn't really good enough, right? And that was primarily because, you know, there's a certain, certain sense uh, we didn't do very well. For example, the cartel absorber, right? The lifetime is pretty short. It's only one to two, two nanosecond as compared to the silicon. It's like a three or four magnitude lower, right? And uh, we really cannot dope it well, right? And also the back contact, it's not omic. Right. So, and also this, uh, this calcophyte is actually absorbing the blue light, right? So there's also pretty high recombination on the front interface as well. So if you compare silicon or garnet arsenic with cartel, 10 years ago, <laughs> cartel is really nothing. It's really, a lot of things are bad, but uh, Fortunately, and thanks to, to, to the entire Camintelorate community, this has been evolved. And now we have been much better, we, we, we are now in a much better position than 10 years back, right? So now we're able to make 22% and we made substantial uh, changes on all aspects uh, of the, the sealing block. Right, so, so we made changes to the back contact where we add a zinc tail layer, uh, which is more omic, so we can improve the fill factor. 
And we also were able to grade the, the cow, we are able to add selenium to, to the cattle, right? To make a calorie alloy, and you know, by doing that, uh, so we actually has lower band gap at the front, and that allow us to absorb more uh, infrared light. So, so that should boost uh, the current, and also the gradient partially should be able to boost uh, the, the, the voltage, right? And we also are able to add the new buffer materials such as DMO to reduce the front interface recombination. So with all that, uh, we were able to make 22% efficiency, so which was a great progress. Right, so again, if you look at all the effort that invested in the, in the last decade, right, so uh, from 2011 to 2012, if, if that's where the, the, the effort started to pay off, right, the first breakthrough was, was on, on the back contact improvement, right, so by using Zintel or Telerian as back contact, you were able to improve the efficiency significantly, mostly driven by the fuel factor. And then um, the lifetime of the absorber starting to uh, follow, right? So and that's again driven by adding selenium into the, into the absorber, which somehow uh, increased lifetime and also having a better annealing procedure should be able to help to pass with the defect, uh, the grain boundary, and also within the grain. Right? So that's another big improvement, which leads to a few tens of efficiency improvement. Uh, and then uh, the gradient absorber, right? so it's kind of optimization there. So if, if you have more selenium to the front and less selenium to the back, you're able actually to have a little bit uh, internal electron reflection that should boost the real thing, right? So that pretty much covers the the the, the progress uh, into the cattle solar cell efficiency accomplished by the entire cattle community in the last ten years. Uh, and one thing I should say is, is that why we're doing Carmen Telluride is that, uh, I mean, as a Samsung technology, uh, it ha inherently it has some advantage by using less material, right, and also use less electricity, so it has very little carbon emission, it's 10, 70 times better than, than the model of silicon in the uh, TV, right, in terms of carbon emission. And so, so we have actually the smallest environmental footprint, and that was, uh, uh, a study by EU Commission and it has 15 factors. Uh, I cannot really read there, but they, we have the smallest footprint. And also, we also have a very short energy payback time. The energy payback time is basically, you know, it means, okay, how much time it takes for the solar module to produce the electricity in order to offset the electricity you have to consume in order to produce that module. It's kind of quite complicated, but, but no, it's not really, right? For the case of cattle, it's only four months. This is also better uh, than silicon. Um, anyway, uh, that's been uh, a little short introduction on cattle uh, <coughs> basics. Uh, next, I want to move on and talk about uh, first solar. Right, so we uh, differentiate ourselves from silicon is that we do in my processing, right? So basically, we'll start with a piece of glass and then deposit TCL, then you start to deposit the semiconductor and then you do the laser scribe and uh, to, to kind of cut the cells, then you, then you do the interconnect and then you do the encapsulation and testing and then you make a module. You know, it takes less than four hours uh, to make a module with the incoming glass, right? So, so the difference here is uh, we're using a large glass substrate uh, for our Travers product. It's like a 60 centimeter uh, to uh, uh, 120 centimeter, a uh, uh, 120 centimeter in size for our latest product is 1.2 by 2 meters in size. So it's pretty big as compared to the wafer. The silicon is you have to put multiple, either 60 or 72 wafers on one big module. 
so th that's one difference. A lot of difference is a fully integrated continuous in that process. And they, because we are a direct a bank up material as opposed to silicon being indirect, we are able to use less material to, to absorb the same amount of uh, um, uh, light. Right, and that, all of that in, uh, help us to uh, realize a lower uh, carbon footprint of faster uh, energy uh, payback time. And uh, also we do the manufacturing pretty much everything kind of in-house, so we, we prob probably benefit from a better quality control uh, as compared to silicon, which is a batch processor. You start with, with the polycrystalline uh, raw material, then you start to grow crystal, then you carry the wafer, then you start to make solar pill, and then you put it on a module, and then for testing. The entire process takes about three days, and uh, very often people rely on downstream, sorry, the upper strain supplier to, 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 to provide the semi finished goods. Um, okay. Well, but even for us, we have been a long way, right? So, so uh, in ninety ninety five, right? That, that was before the first solar uh, is solar cell in, right? And then nineteen ninety five, we become the first solar. But uh, like in ninety five, we were able to produce fifty one modules, seven percent efficiency, which you would consider garbage today. But that's what we were able to accomplish. That which was still a tremendous of progress if you consider that was twenty close to twenty no twenty six years ago right so in two thousand six where commercial volume production really started we are hitting seventy five watt with again double digit efficiency ten percent right we also learn a whole lot on encapsulation how that impact the durability. 2013, uh, we were able to keep 95 watts, that's 13% efficiency with less degradation and uh, more durable and be able to pass more uh, like accelerated lifetime test. Uh, 2015 is 115 watts to 120 watts, right, and it's 16 to 17% efficiency depending on whether you put power on it or not, and it was robust enough for 15 watt, 1500 watt uh, uh, power plant, uh, which is, is gradually become the mainstream, and first solar was the leader at that time. Right? So, and the energy density uh, finally were able to exceed the multi crystal silicon. Right? And the world record module, uh, I think that was made in, oh, yeah, 2015 as well, is 113 watt, 18.2% efficiency. And the upshot is actually 18.6 or 7 percent, and that was the highest efficiency simple module in the world. Um, so that was uh, up to uh, 2015, and then the company uh, has decided uh, a strategy in terms of scaling. Right? We need to grow. Right? We need to increase our capacity. How would you do that? Of course, the first thing you would do is uh, let's let's build more power. Let's build more factories. Right? The second thing you can do is, uh, okay, let the factory run faster. Right? The third, th third thing you could do is, okay, let's just make bigger panels. Right? We did all of those. Right? We we build more factory, of course, uh, but largely we we want to say, okay, let's build more factory, but a larger factory size, a larger module. Let's build more factory. Let's build be able to produce larger module, right? So the the the, the learning with leverage was okay based on the, the large panel display industry, right? It's getting cheaper every day and also the screen size is getting bigger, but it's getting cheaper, right? So it's, it's basically when you do the scanning exercise, right? So let's say you double uh, the the software size, right? You you your equipment cost Per substrate size actually goes down, right? That the same uh, methodology works for for uh, large power display. It also works for for thin solar, right? So by doing this, we are able to reduce the cost of solar module manufacturing and uh, 
Consequently, we are also be able to install the cost of installation. So that is kind of the benefit added up, right, is really a substantial reduction of the balance of system cost. And that's exactly what we did with uh, what we call the Series 6 product, right? So Series 4 is here, right? It's 0.72 meter square. And series 6 is 2.4 meter square. It's about three times the size, but you don't spend three times the money to, to make the module, right? So just some key advantage of Series 6 product, right? So right now, the leading line in Ohio, we are producing 18.2% efficiency already, right? So we already pretty much getting close on the efficiency target that we committed to, to the customer, and they maintain the energy yield advantage as compared to, to the silicon. Uh, it's basically is that we are more robust against uh, uh, the human environment, right? And uh, we also have lower temperature coefficient. Uh, and after all, we still maintain the, the, the market leading uh, reliability, right? So, and the one more advantage I didn't mention is that the, the more watt uh, per module, actually your, your, your labor cost during installation is also cheaper. I mean, not only you're reducing the, the balance of system component cost, but also reduce the, 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 the labor cost. And then we also have a, have a very innovative framing, right, which is under frame, and that basically you will not reduce the size of actual area, but we actually be able to make the module more robust and also um, make the installation easier. And that's our Series 6 uh, product, and we launched that product last year, and I'm going to show you what's the capacity now, right? So, so basically, as of now, we still have <coughs> we still have a two gigawatt of Series 4. Uh, uh, capacity in Malaysia, uh, and in parallel we have 600 megawatt of Series 6 capacity in Ohio. Uh, we 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 start that in start production in 2018, and uh, we have uh, a larger 1.2 gigawatt of Series 6 factory in Malaysia, which also start production in 2018. And then we have two factory in Vienna, which is one of the already start production, a lot of it's under construction, and, and the adding them together is 2.4 gigawatt, right? And then we have a plant, second plant in Ohio, 1.2 gigawatt, series six, that's under construction uh, already in Ohio. So, so and on top of that, there's a plan of building a second Malaysia Series 6 factory, maybe next year. Um, so add it up, right? So we have 2 gigawatt Series 4 in production and 4.2 gigawatt Series 6 in production. So uh, as of today, it's already 6.2 gigawatt of the total capacity. Then we are adding 1.2 gigawatt in Ohio. So that's uh, under construction, which will be ready in uh, this year. So. In total, we have talked about uh, 7.4 gigawatt of global uh, manufacturing capacity, and uh, uh, among them, 1.8 gigawatt in, is in the U.S. So we, we remain, and we will be actually bigger. Uh, we, so we are we are the biggest U.S. Uh, PV manufacturer, you know, with with all the ca capacity at hand. Okay, so this is just uh, something to show with, with uh, our Ohio factory is total 1.8 gigawatt, and the, bot, the bottom right is what you see in, in the factory. Uh, and this is the, our Malaysia factory. We had six factory at the beginning, right? Now we kind of combine M5 and M6 as one uh, factory, but with larger capacity as compared to before. Okay, finally, let's brief talk about some 
type of uh, research progress they have made recently, right? So, uh, what's the opportunity for, for kind of tele teller research? I think uh, nobody's going to argue about this. The cartel, as far as we will see, well, still pretty far away from, from the ideal. We are probably 150 meters away if you compare the record we will see we have uh, and uh, with the, the, the will see that was established by single crystal cartel or single crystal Ghanaian arsenic, right? So we are 150 millivolts short. So that translates into the efficiency is close to 2 to 3 percent efficiency, which is pretty big for us to, to invest, right? So how do you improve VLC, right? So this something you can do is uh, to reduce the recombination uh, in the bulk, but based on our current assessment, the bulk lifetime, it, as we measure, and also CSU has some good number on this too, is anywhere between 100 nanoseconds to one micron, so which is probably okay, still not as good as compared to Ghanaian arsenic silicone, but it's not the level one concern for us. Uh, the other two is, uh, is you can leverage the passivation, for example, is how to outdo your pass with the bad contact, contact as you can with silicon or, or, or Ghanaian arsenic. We do not know how to do this yet, right? That's something that remains green. Um, but one thing we do a lot better than five years ago is we can do doping better, and that should boost the building voltage, and then you, you, in return it's going to get you a higher real thing, right? So, so why doping has been a critical issue for us, right? So if you uh, recall the 22% for solar cartel record efficiency, the record cell, which made a couple of years ago, the doping was actually pretty low. It's like a, a less than one if Less than one in 15, right? So uh, if you can boost the doping, and then you should get a, a 60 millivolt increase of VOC per one order of magnitude of the carrier density, and we we're able actually to do that recently by replace the copper with arsenic, which actually be able to get close to one in 17 of doping concentration. If you do that calculation, you're already getting close to 100 millivolt VOC increase, right? So we have done success, success on that, right? So the left side of the chart is, again, the doping curve. Right? We're able to adjust the doping uh, by, by incorporating group by element. You can do low doping. You can do high doping. On the right side is actually the VOC of devices. With low doping, you get lower VOC. With high doping, you start to get see higher VOC. Not high luck, but you start to see the correlation between doping uh, and we will say which is consistent to to uh, to, to the theory. And uh, very excitedly, and uh, we are now be able to make 20.8% cell without entire effect coding. So the we will see here is 856, the fill factor is 80, and the current is also very good, right? So this, if you add the arc coding on that, should be 21.5. Uh, and by the way, some of these cells were probably made about a year ago, so we should have better numbers today. So I would say, um, as far as the peak efficiency, the arsenic doped cartel device is getting very close to copper doped cartel. And one additional advantage of arsenic doping is actually the device is extremely stable. It just doesn't degrade uh, at um, slightly anyway temperature. So uh, that's something I would like to report to you, and um, I think that should also conclude my, my talk. And so again, there's a lot of energy from the sun. You, you can have it, and uh, CATO is a great technology for us to continue to, to work on, right? And we are expanding our capacity uh, the same as our silicon uh, friends. That's about it. Thanks uh, very much for listening to my talk. All right. Thank you so much. Um, it, Gong, uh, do you have some time to answer any questions if there are, are some from the
Okay, great. Um, well, if anyone uh, has any, uh, feel free to either use your microphone or, or type them into the chat window. I'm not sure if you if you can see the uh, the chat at the moment. There's a few people type, typing, so there may be a question. Just a moment. Yeah, I'm reading it. Somebody's on my email address. Uh, yeah, if you if you'd like to share the slides, I can I can put them up uh, available when when we post the video as well. It, it, it's a
एवढं हात वय ठेवत तर पाय Uh, j- just to, uh, to to follow on, Brendan, if, if you're unaware, we, we uh, will be posting a, a video of the talk. So uh, at a minimum, you can review the uh, the slides through the, uh, the the video that will be on YouTube uh, in the next few days. Okay. Well, if there aren't any other questions, uh, 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 thank you once again, uh, Gong, for taking the time to give the talk. Uh, n- no worries about the, uh, the the time from agreeing to uh, to giving. We're, we were thrilled you're able to, uh, to to do one at all. So uh, um, thank you once again, and uh, thanks everyone uh, for joining us. And we'll have the video posted shortly. Thanks again.